Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And it's time for another bi-weekly clip from my course, Foundations of Organic Chemistry, produced in collaboration with the Great Courses. This time we're going to talk about catalytic hydrogenation of alkenes and how this very important class of reactions comes with some very important considerations, especially with respect to stereochemistry and how the isomer of the alkene that we start with can have a tremendous effect on the stereochemistry of the products that are formed. If you'd like to see more after you've seen this clip, just go to www.chemsurvival.com to get even more information about my 36-part organic chemistry course. So without any further delay, enjoy the clip. But just as before when we did our halogenation, I have to turn my alkene so that we can see it in the reactive orientation. As it approaches the surface of the catalyst, the hydrogen is first separated into separate hydrogen atoms. So we've already succeeded in weakening the bond between the two hydrogens. My alkene comes in from the side and new bonds are formed to the activated hydrogen atoms at the catalyst surface. Once hydrogenation is complete, you can see the molecule detaches itself and moves back away into either the liquid or gas phase. Now, the catch to this, of course, is we can only add the hydrogens from the same side of the alkene, meaning that this particular process proceeds as a syn addition. Syn, meaning the same side of the alkene, is modified. So in situations where we have reactions which may produce uh, stereoisomers, meaning when these carbons here have different substituents, we have a potential for a different kind of product to form, one which is uh, either a particular diastereomer or a particular enantiomer. Right, so in the case of asymmetrical alkenes, this means the reaction is diastereoselective. An example of this is catalytic hydrogenation of E3,4-dimethyl-3-octene. This reaction produces the RR and SS pair of stereoisomers, while the catalytic hydrogenation of the Z stereoisomer, the same starting material, would lead to the RS and SR stereoisomers. So in this case, my choice of starting material is very important. The preceding content is an excerpt from my new course, which I developed in collaboration with The Great Courses. It's available now for sale on DVD and download. For more information, you can go to my website, www.chemsurvival.com. That's www.chemsurvival.com. That's all for now, everyone. I'm Professor Davis, and as always, I'll see you on my next video.